Praise the Lord. God bless you. Welcome to the message today. I pray that this meets you right where you are. God has given us a word this week about something called closing the gap. Closing the gap. And you know, I believe that it's something for you. It's something that God is doing in your life. And it's something that God wants to reveal to you about where he's taking you and what he wants to do right where you are in your circumstance, in your situation. I believe that this word is directly for you. You know, the Lord spoke to me years ago about something called shadows that occur throughout the process of our life. Did you know that your life revolves in cycles? It revolves in cycles. Everything in nature happens in a cycle. Everything in your life occurs in a cycle. And you're going to hear in the message, the Lord spoke to me. He said, Michael, whenever you receive the word of God, whenever you really receive the word, I'm starting a new cycle in your life because the word of God has its own cycle. There's a process for the word in your life every time that you receive the word. God wants to expose the shadows. And the Lord spoke to me this week and he said, I want to close the gap on those shadow places in your life, on the dark places in your life. You're going to hear in the message where the Lord is the source of light. And the Bible talks in the book of Psalms. It says that the word of God is a lamp unto your feet and a light unto your path. The Lord wants to show us exactly where we are and exactly where we're headed and where he wants to take us. There's a process that's working in you and there are certain things on your cycle that God wants to give you revelation on. There's certain things that he wants to expose you to and there's things that he wants you to grow in. So the cycle is for you. God has that cycle in your life for you it's building something it's creating something so listen to the message i pray that this blesses you see what god is trying to build and what he's trying to create in your life as we go into the word for today i pray that this blesses you and i'll see you guys at the end of the message listen to this so on and so forth two years ago god showed me the vision i saw the gears of a clock i said what is that he said each gear has a specific position, a specific place. When one gear is missing, all the gears fail to operate. So the arms on the clock never turn. I said, well, what is that? The Lord said, that's revival. That's revival over the city. Because revival is here. But until it can be released on that level... God is getting things in place. He's getting the gears in position so that the, the wheels can begin to turn. So he's trying to get us in position. He's trying to get us in place. So we are in need of more fathers. Come on. We're in need of more fathers. Fathers. So God is trying to get us in position to receive what he wants to release to us. Praise the Lord. So the Bible calls him the father of lights. Praise the Lord. Let's go into the next scripture. Let's go into Genesis 1, 16. Genesis 1 and Genesis 1. And I'm going to be reading at verse 16. Hold your place in James because we'll come back to this. Let me know when you guys are there. Somebody in the on the uh, live feed, please put the scripture in the comments for me if you can. Genesis chapter 1. Hallelujah. And it says here, verse 16. And it says here, and God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light. To rule the night, he made the stars 
also. I needed you guys to see that. Let's go quickly to Second Peter one nineteen. Just want to build your faith today. Let me know when you guys are there. Second Peter. Second Peter one nineteen. Hallelujah. And it says here. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Closing the gap. We thank you, Lord God, for closing the gap today. Hallelujah. Zikuronamadia. Thank you, Jesus. Second Peter. Second Peter one. And it says here, verse 19. We also have a more sure word of prophecy whereunto ye do well that ye take heed as unto a light that shineth. In a dark place, and it says, until the day dawn, and the day star, which is Christ, and the day star arise in your hearts. I'm going to read that again. We have also a more sure word of prophecy, wherein ye do well that ye take heed as unto the light that shineth in a dark place. Until the day dawn and the day star or until Christ arise in your heart. Somebody say Christ is rising in me. Christ is rising in me. Praise the Lord. We're closing the gap. We're closing the gap. Hallelujah. Let's jump back to James. And in the psalm it says until the perfect light of day. One of the psalms says until the perfect light. Light of day. It's speaking of a place of light in you. And the scripture, it also says, let thine eye be pure so that thy whole body be full of what? Full of light. Hallelujah. Some years ago, I wrote a book called Be Full of Light. God is interested in you being full of light. Praise the Lord. Let's go to James. I'm building your faith. We're back in James chapter one. And I'm going to read this again to you guys. It says, but every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then when lust hath conceived, it brings forth sin and sin. When it is finished, brings forth death. Do not err, my beloved brethren. Every good and perfect gift is from above. In other words, every good gift comes from God and cometh down from the father of lights, the source of light, watch this, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Praise the Lord. So the Bible in the scripture in Genesis talks about the, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. So it's talking about God in eternity and then God in time. All right, so the revelation is a, 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 if you would understand that we have shadows, we have shadows in our life, uh, places of darkness where there lacks understanding, some areas where we lack um, breakthrough. There's those seasons of temptation that come around in our life. Come on. So how many know your life goes in a cycle? Life is built on cycles. Praise the Lord. Years ago, um, God showed me in a vision and I began to draw the ring. I began to draw the circle and the Lord showed me. He said, do you see that? And I drew a circle like this. If I had a chalkboard, I'd, I'd do it, but I don't have one. I drew a circle like this and the Lord said, do you see that? And I said, I see that. And the Lord said, that's your life. 
And he said, your life goes in a cycle. All life revolves in a cycle. Praise the Lord. And I said, why is that? He said, because that's how I created it. So everything follows that pattern. So even in nature, the earth turns on what? An axis. Right? The seasons follow a what? A cycle. Summer, winter, fall, spring. Our life has what? Seasons and cycles or really seasons that follow a cycle seasons that follow a cycle so the lord said your life goes in a cycle so when god gives you the word he gives you the word and whenever he gives you the word praise the lord it starts a cycle a new cycle that's why the word is important everybody in here right now today are receiving a new cycle every time you really receive the word you're receiving a new cycle. Praise the Lord. But the Lord said, Michael, it doesn't stop there. He said, because if you, he said, the cycle of your life isn't only meant to be seen two dimensionally. Now, he helped me understand this, maybe because I'm an artist, I can understand this. But he said, turn the circle. So I turned the circle in my vision. I turned the circle. And I saw the sides of the circle. And the Lord said, many people's lives are like this. He said, but I designed you to um, cycle and elevate. So your life isn't just appearing as a circle. If you turn it, I'm creating something. He said, your life resembles more like a ring. Or like a slink, like that slinky. So in other words, when you come around your cycle, you're not supposed to go back around the same cycle. Come on, somebody. You're supposed to elevate. So you come around, you elevate. You come around and you elevate. Come on, somebody. You come around and you elevate. You come around and you elevate. What are you creating? You're creating a cycle that's elevating. You're going through a cycle that's elevating. You're not supposed to be in a donut where you're cycling around and you're cycling around and you're going through the same stuff and you're going through the same stuff. There's no elevation. Come on, God desires for us to elevate. So the Lord showed me this in a vision. And he says, these are called prophetic cycles. So the Lord said, he's endeavoring to create something with your life. He said, now take that ring, take that ring and now turn it on its side facing you. And I took the ring and what was I looking through? A tunnel. So we went from a circle 
to those rings to a tunnel. So every time you elevate, you're creating something that someone can go through. You see that? You're creating something someone can go through. He said, Michael, this is your life. Every time I give you the word, you're starting a new cycle. So he said, it's important that you come back around. You come back around. Praise the Lord. I'm going to help somebody today with your gift. So that's why sometimes it feels like things cut on and off. Because you're in different seasons. And if you understood that you're just in a cycle, you're going to come back around. But if you don't complete the cycle, then you're going to have to repeat some things. Come on, somebody. Come on. I don't know about you, and I don't want to repeat some of this stuff. I don't want to repeat some stuff. I don't want to have to go back to my first works. I want to complete the cycle, come back around. Hallelujah. So you have to repeat some things if you don't make it all the way around like you're supposed to. Yeah. And if you are not attentive in your cycle, you'll miss some things along the way. And there's different things on different levels. Somebody once came to me and said, Pastor Michael, I can't hear the voice of God. I mean, he was speaking to me so clear for a while, but I can't hear his voice. And the Lord said to me, I'm speaking. And I said, and I'm praying for them and I'm having a conversation with the Lord. And the Lord's saying to me, I'm speaking. And I'm asking the Lord. I said, well, she says she can't hear you. And he says, I'm speaking. He says, but yeah, she can't hear me. I said, well, why can't she hear you? He says, because I'm speaking on a different level. She's listening in the same place she was last time. If she wants to hear me where I am now, she's going to have to come up. Hallelujah. So God is trying to always call us up higher. And with your gift, he's trying to call you up higher. There's a greater place for you to operate in. There's a greater place for you to move in. You've got to be able to go through that cycle. And how many know one of the keys to the anointing is focus? So first, knowing who you are. We talked about the voice of truth that reveals who you are in Christ. And uh, once you understand who you are in Christ, now you have to learn how to focus on what God has given you. And that focus will allow you to develop and become effective. Come on and become skilled. And um, we don't it's not like growing outward. Really, it's more so growing inward. Because there's greater details of everything that's deeper and deeper and deeper in your gift. We often tend to try to look outward for what we want in our gift, but really it's inward. And that seer can see and, uh, and be effective with their gift and know how to pray because really God will show you what to pray for, who to pray for, how to pray. Elder Deborah was, was believing God for some breakthrough. Elder Lane just so happened to be in the spirit. And an intercessor. Come on. Elder Deborah said, I got this. She saw Elder Lane's face. I got to call Elder Lane. Elder Lane called her before she could dial the number. Come on. Somebody say effective. Skilled. To be skilled intercessors. To be a skilled prophet. Be a skilled seer. Be a skilled dreamer. You have dreams. Don't be satisfied just having dreams. Understand your dreams. God is building a place where we can do that, where we can be effective, where we can become like those sons and daughters of glory that the earth is yearning for. The woman she had, the, she, she was writing the book about the sons and daughters of glory, didn't even know it. Writing a book about a company of people. Didn't even know she was seeing the body of Christ. You don't know what you have. You've got something powerful in you. And God is no respecter of persons. Come on, he's a respecter of faith. Praise the Lord. So, 
So the Bible says that there's no variableness, neither shadow of turning in God. How many know God is not a cycle? Come on. God doesn't have a cycle. The Bible says he has no variable or no shadow of turning. Now, we have cycles, but God doesn't have cycles. Oh, hallelujah. The Lord is about to take us somewhere. So, God wants to illuminate the path underneath your feet. And so, he's like the sun in the center of the galaxy that the orbit is turning on. Hallelujah. And the closer you get to that sun, the, the, the more habitable you are. That's why the earth is what? The closest, come on, the closest to the sun. How many know nature preaches, nature prophesies? The earth is the closest to the sun. It makes it more habitable. My question to you today is, are you habitable? Are you close enough to the sun to be habitable? Somebody say father of lights. He is the father of lights. He is the source of a light. He is the light. Somebody say closing the gap. So God is steadily bringing us in to him. He's bringing us into him. Watch this. I'm going to take it to another level. Praise the Lord. What a powerful, Super powerful video. Light. Powerful message. God is speaking directly to us. And you heard in the last part of the video, it talks about being closest to the sun that makes you more habitable, just like it is in our universe, just like it is in nature. And that's what God wants to do. He wants to bring us closer to him. It's about relationship. It's about connecting with the Lord. Well, there's so much more to that message. If you guys want to hear the full message, visit us on YouTube. Uh, you can also find it on our website at breakoutcentercleveland.com. Um, you can also find it on our Facebook page at the Breakout Center on Facebook. You know, God wants to close the gap on the dark places, on the dark areas, on the shadows of our life again like we said in the message god is the source of light the bible says in james chapter one it says that there's no variableness or shadow of turning in him he is perfect light guess what that perfect light lives directly in you that perfect light lives right inside of you he that's in you is greater than he that's in the world the light that's in you is the brightest light. It's the greatest light. It's greater than the darkness that's in the world around you. And God wants to make us aware of that light. He's closing the gap. I want to leave you with this today. You are making progress in your life. You are making progress in your life. Let that be your confession. A lot of times the enemy wants to make you feel discouraged. He wants to make you feel like you're not making progress. He wants to make you feel like every time that you fall, you are um, a failure. I have a message for you. God has not declared you a failure. He's declared you a victor in Jesus name. God is not interested or concerned about you falling. God's not concerned about you falling. I'll say it that way. He's concerned about you recovering. He's not looking at all the times you fall. He's looking at all the times you got back up. That's how he sees you. He's looking at all the places where he wants you to recover. He's steadily trying to get you into a position to recover and get back on track. That's how God sees you. That's what closing the gap is about. It's about seeing your life in the places where you are learning to recover quicker. Some of the things that knocked you down, that kept you down and held you down for some time are not holding you down as long as it did in times past. That thing that took you out years ago that might have taken you months to get over. Well, look at your life. You may still be struggling with some of the same hangups, but it's not taking you the same amount of time to recover. What might have taken you months to recover is now taking you days to recover. Guess what? The good news is that God is closing the gap. It's not going to be long until 
that thing is not affecting you at all because God has now closed the gap. There are some things that are happening in our lives that God is closing the gap on and he's bringing it closer and closer and closer to the place of fullness of light in that area. The Bible says, let not thine eye be evil, but let it be pure so that you may be full of light. Well, the fullness of light is a place of maturity. And that's what God is closing the gap on. And that's in different areas and in different pockets throughout your life in different places. As you begin to surrender every part in every area of your life, as you walk with the Lord, God begins to fill those places in your life that you're able to surrender to him on those levels. He fills them with himself. He fills them with light and he illuminates the room of your life so that he can illuminate the rooms of the lives of those around you. That's what closing the gap is about. It's when the light comes in and fills all the dark places. There's a process that you're in. There's a cycle that you're in and God has designed this cycle to build you. I wanna pray before we leave. Father God, I pray, Father, that you would bless every person watching this video, watching this message, this series. Father, I pray that you would continue to close the gap and the gaps and the dark places in their lives as you illuminate your light so much more in every area of their life in Jesus name I pray father I pray that you would give them the strength I pray that you would revitalize them I pray that you would illuminate their path even as it says in your word that thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path Lord be a light unto our path even in the process that we're going through even in our cycles Lord God help us to get back up and continue what you've placed before us the Bible says that the righteous man gets up seven times. Again, God is not concerned about you falling. He's not worried about you falling. The Bible says that he will not allow you to slip, fall, or fail. All you need to do is continue to trust and have faith in you. God is interested in your recovery. He's quickening you to recover today. Praise the Lord. I pray that this message has blessed you at this moment. I have the opportunity to ask for your faithful support and thank you for those of you, our members and our supporters and our partners who have supported this ministry and have carried us through the pandemic, all the blessings that the Lord has brought us into in this year in 2021. Um, I want to ask you to continue to give your support. If you want to sow a seed into the ministry and if you're new, you're just joining, you're just watching us. I want to invite you to partner with us at the BreakoutCenterCleveland.com. BreakoutCenterCleveland.com. You can also give on Cash App through hashtag Breakout Church. If you want to mail the check out to the ministry, you can mail it right out to our offices. It's going to be 2490 Lee Boulevard, Cleveland Heights, Ohio. And you can make that check payable to our financial arm, which is MDW Financial Inc. Again, you can make that payable to MDW Financial Inc. Again, I pray that this blessed you guys. Have a good rest of your day and we'll see you next time on the broadcast, next time as we post on this series. And I pray that the Lord blesses you as you go.